Namaste everyone and welcome to Vichar Mantra. My name is Kishan and I will be your host for this evening. Today we'll be discussing the topic, are we struggling as a society? Firstly, what is Vichar Mantra? For those of you who are watching us for the first time, the first the phrase Vichar Mantan originates from Sanskrit, and it literally means the churning of ideas. Vichar Mantan is an independent voluntary organization which offers a platform, like we have set up today, where we invite experts within a subject to turn thoughts and ideas. And we encourage you to take that mantan into your homes. Vichar Mantan explores topics pertinent to British society through Hindu civilizational lens. Ultimately, we believe there's much wisdom that can be unlocked through dialogue. We do thank you for your time and support, especially our well-wishers. With your contributions, we're able to host these events. As many of you already know, we normally host these events outside where we get a fair whack of people that turn up. Today, we've had to do it inside understandably, given the current condition. That all being said, I hope you enjoy tonight's Vichar Mantra. I'd like to introduce our two panelists for tonight. Our first panelist is Dr. Nisha Mogachi. She's based in Nottingham, where she works as a consultant psychiatrist for old age patients. She specializes in the sphere of mental health, very apt for our topic today. Our second panelist, is Dr. Ram Bedia, originally from Nagpur, and is currently based in Leicester. Ramji is currently the in international coordinator for Hindu Swam Silk completed his master's in Sanskrit, he went on to do his PhD in integral humanism, Jainism, Avedanta. The topic for tonight's Vicharamantan is, are we struggling as a society? Have you ever asked yourselves that question before? We always think about internal uh, struggles, but when do we think about the struggles of society? Well, maybe we do. Maybe you've discussed it with your friends, colleagues, families. Well, we'll be discussing it today. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask the panelists, feel free to drop them into the Facebook Live section, into the comment section, and we'll try and adhere them to our panelists. Our month and today will last for 45 minutes. The speakers will get five minutes each to give their tickets on the topic, after which we'll hold our discussion. Without further ado, I'll pass you on to Nisha. Hello, namaste. Um, my name is Nisha Makashi. As uh, Kishinji said, I work as a consultant psychiatrist. So I've been asked to talk about what struggle is, uh, what I believe it to be, and something about um, how we might be struggling as a society. So essentially, I think struggle is about movement, movement to a position that helps us feel that we are more in keeping with our needs and desires. When I was thinking about how um, we're struggling at the moment with the situation with COVID-19, I want to put forward and discuss um, a theoretical framework, a model that can help us understand what might be happening to us as individuals with our own struggles, but also our struggle in society. So some of you may have already heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, it was a, a framework put forward to help us understand human behavior and how we motivate ourselves. Um, the basic premise is that everything that we do in life is usually to meet one of the needs. So it's up behind me here. Um, there are five parts to the pyramid, to the hierarchy, and I'll talk through each one and explain it as we go. So the bottom one is physiological. I'm sorry you can't quite see it. I'm slightly in the way. Um, so physiological needs are physical needs. So these are basic needs that need to be met, hunger, thirst, bodily functions that are important for us to be able to move on to the next stage. The orange one is safety. So in order to uh, feel secure in ourselves, we need to have security in our, in our environment. 
We need to be emotionally or psychologically safe and secure um, before we can move on to the next stage, which is the yellow one, love and belonging. So this is about relationships and how they make us feel. And it's important as human beings that we uh, feel as if we belong to a family, to a culture, um, that there's a sense of being part of something. So it's often about our friendships, our relationships. And once those needs have been met, we can then move into the next rung, which is the green one about self-esteem. This is about our confidence, our ability to value ourselves. And, and often we do that through our relationships, but it can also be done through our work, through our hobbies, um, how we're validated in society and what our status is, gives us a sense of self-esteem. And Maslow proposed that as we move through the hierarchy, we'll eventually be able to reach self-actualization, which is about us being the best person we can be, achieving our ultimate goals. Um, maybe we want to be a good mother. Maybe we want to be an amazing athlete. And those things can be realized once the other four have primarily been met. So that's how we define how we struggle as a movement through these different uh, levels. Um, but it's important to remember that we don't have to have met every single one in order. There is some uh, flexibility around that and you can move through them in different orders and at different times. But it's very likely that they'll all be affecting us and we'll all be finding our way through uh, the hierarchy. So when we think about how we apply this to society. I think you can certainly put up Maslow's hierarchy against what's happening, particularly at the moment, um, to all of us really, in the way we're living our lives in very different ways. You can see many examples of how individuals are re realizing their self-actualization and they're putting themselves in difficult positions. For example, key workers who may be putting other people's needs before them. We can see amazing acts of charity and selflessness in our society. We can see examples of doctors and scientists working to create novel ways of making a ventilator to save people's lives, maybe come up with a vaccine for COVID-19. So, but we also know that we've been driven to meet many of our basic needs as well, whether that's the need for toilet rolls, for hand sanitizer, for masks. So in summary, um, I think we move through different levels of need on a daily basis and we can move from the most basic to those that uh, make us excel as human beings. Um, the Vedas teach us that we all have the potential to realize ourselves and to realize our true potential. It's within all of us, but I'll, I'll leave Ramji to expand a little bit more on that. Um, so I hope you found that helpful uh, and interesting and I'm happy to try and answer any questions you may have um, about that. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much Nishaji. Um, I'll, pass this, I'll pass ourselves over to Ramji now. Namaste. Thanks Krishan for the amazing the, uh, the five levels of the consciousness. Let me start with some metaphor. This is a cup in my hand. And if I place this cup on the table, the table is, imagine the table of the top, uh, the top of the table is very narrow as the circumference of the bottom of this cup. So we place the cup on the table. The cup has to struggle to remain stable on the table. The small push enough for the cup to topple down. The cup may think, oh, I will break into pieces. I will die. Cup can curse the base and or the bad luck. Cup can curse also the government, the people, also the manufacturer. Why? That manufacturer made me so big. And therefore, whenever the cup thinks about its own situation, the cup can struggle by itself. But cup can think also, I want to hold here. I want to breathe peacefully here. And therefore, the cup will have a struggle to withstand against all the odds. The cup may be strong there, 
And if you have a cup is full of the tea, the cup has a more responsibility that tea should not be spilled. And that's why the entire, the, the, the responsibility of the cup is to hold on the small and narrow, the bottom. But cup can expand its base because to ease the whole struggle of the cup, cup can expand its stability. And stable cup can be when the, the, the base is quite wider. And when the base is quite wider, the cup can stay there very stable. Even now, the challenge will have a, the, the wind will have a problem, a challenge, that how to topple the cup down. And that's why it is the responsibility of the cup that how to widen the base under me. When the base is wider, the struggle turns into the non-struggle. An individual, when he or she thinks of only individual, its own self, then the struggle starts. When he expands its base to the family, he gets stability. The family which expands the base to the society, then that family is stable. Similarly, a society, the country or nation, that nation has a base of civilization, that nation becomes a stable and long lasting. And a civilization expands its base to entire universe, that civilization remains eternal. And therefore, we, if you want to, if you contract ourselves more, we struggle more. If we larger or we expand our base, more stable and comfortable we become. And therefore, the solution of the struggle is to develop the larger and wider base. The notion of creating wider base for an individual. And now I'm giving, I'm finishing my statement. The very magic word is called dharma. Namaste. Thank you very much, Ramji. Um, I think I'm going to come straight to Ramji first just because we finished uh, yours just now. How does one expand their base? We use the analogy of uh, the cup, the teacup. How does a teacup or how does the person expand their base? The expansion of the, uh, the base happens in our mindset. Whenever I think of I'm a center of the universe, I always think about the myself individually. But when I think of them or share the planet with study something more than that, bigger than that, then I can definitely share the understand the base. There are four, three, four questions normally individual ask in a philo any philosophy. The first question is, who am I? Second question is, what is around me? The third question is, what is the connection between me and the thing around me? And the fourth question comes at, what is the purpose of my life? And if you understand is a third question that what is the connection between me and the things around me, I start expanding the my base and therefore I become very stable. The narrower our base is, more struggle we experience. The wider our base is, we are more comfortable. Do you think many people are now thinking about that third term you uh, linked in there where they have to think about others? Or do you think society is based in a way where actually, no, we don't really think about others? And the reason I ask this is because we live in a, we live in a capitalistic society. Everything seems to be, or maybe I'm incorrect over here, but from, from anecdotally what I hear, everything seems to be about the accumulation of wealth. One buys a house for themselves, then they buy, once they have enough money, they buy the bigger car, then the bigger house. At no point do I see many people thinking, oh, hang on a second, my house is big enough today. I'm going to use the extra money that I get from my wages now to maybe help somebody else build their own house. I won't do that. Actually, what I will do is now upgrade my Ford Fiesta to a Mercedes Benz. So how does that switch come into society for us to think about others? 
I think this coronavirus situation brought us to think about ourselves. I get so many messages also you must be getting as well. If I talk to the people, now people are realizing how much really I want in my life. What exactly the life is? My one of my friend had so much money or wealthy, but he wanted to go to the Bharat, India, but he couldn't go for many emergency reasons. And that's time he mentioned to me that, see Ram, I have everything, but still I'm helpless. And that's why this such type of situations is brought, unfortunately, but always we should see something positivity in that any situation. Therefore, now this situation is now forcing us to think that really what exactly we want and what exactly we need. There's a difference between the need and the greed. So whatever now we are, we are buying the things what we need because we used to buy the things by, out of the greed. Do you think though, once this epidemic is over, people will change their ways? Or do you think people will actually go back to how they originally were? I feel it will change. The it entire will change. world order will change. It may go different way. Either people may go to the very jungle law or they can become very spiritual and social as well. And that's why I use this metaphor about the cup. That whenever you have a problem, and if we think of the only problem level to solve it, we can never solve the problem. Either we have to see over the problem, like we repair the watch, or we have to see under the problem, like we repair the car. Then only we can see the problem. We can solve the problem. And therefore, if you see the problem at the individual level, you cannot solve the problem individually. Either you have to see something above, go above, or go to under the problem. And that's why this cup analogy uh, is very important for, to understand very seriously to go above the problem and go under the problem. Thank you, Ranji. Nijaji, what do you reckon to that same question? Do you think post when we're free now to be able to mingle and do as we please after, things will change? People will think, uh, change their mindsets? Or do you think people will revert back to going into the way they were going before? Uh, I'm sorry, somebody just came in. I, I missed what you said. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. No problem, that's okay. I was asking, do you think people will change their mindsets like Lounge suggested, because it takes something big like this epidemic for people to change their mindsets? Or do you think people are changing their mindsets temporarily and once everything's lifted, once this lockdown is lifted, people will revert back to how they were before? I, I mean, I think there will be some individuals who will be able to make very long lasting changes in their life. And I think if I bring it back to the hierarchy of need, it will be driven by the different needs in that, in terms of their own individual lives. Um, but I think there will be many people who will have to go back. I mean, the reality is that people need to go to work and people need to earn money for their livelihoods, for their children's security, for food and various things. So I think these things will change at a certain level um, for some individuals, depending on their circumstances. And there'll be other people who will really struggle to make those changes. What I think is key, though, is that these are led at government, state level, um, by various institutions that have the ability to really influence how people think and feel. So I think that's really going to be the key, um, or one of the key factors, is what happens uh, from the government level and how they propose to change things um, because certainly we've seen our relationship with this with the government change quite drastically recently I think people are more willing to have possibly that conversation um, about how they want to be governed and led differently thank you very much Nishaji I, I notice I, I can't help but look at you and also look at that triangle behind you um, it's fantastic, actually. Um, I, I'm remembering about when you spoke and gave your explanation. You mentioned that people had to kind of work up that triangle. Is it possible for someone to reach the top of that triangle with by skipping the first four, or do you think that's it's laddered? 
I think um, I think you, it would be very difficult to manage a, a true change in terms of uh, meeting an ultimate goal or achieving something without having those needs met. And I think probably you know without meeting your own physiological bodily needs, it'd be very very difficult to move forward. Um, however, I think the ones that maybe there is more flexibility around maybe around the yellow and the green. Um, parts of it so the the love belonging and, and esteem I think that those two parts of it are less about your physical kind of needs and more about your emotional or psychological needs and there is maybe more flexibility around those aspects um, I mean Maslow did suggest that this would be done in a stepped hierarchical way but other people have suggested actually you know there is there needs to be more flexibility and I think again bringing it back to the current situation we'll all know of examples in our own lives where we're moving between these different aspects so making sure our health is in line has become a real need for many people and that's been a real change for them um, how they are in their relationships with their family discussions that having i've had a number of uh, sort of chats with friends and family about how it's really changed the way uh, they talk in their in their house about maybe more about their feelings and more about their emotions we've really had the time and the space maybe to be able to have some of those discussions and uh, open feelings uh, in households which is which is great to, to hear and see i think that's a fantastic last point that you put over there that uh, and it, it emph i emphasize on time because in today's society, I question how much free time many people do have. And now it seems that many of us, time is that constraint that we once may have had. And for that reason, we're able to talk to those that are close to us and stuck in the same household and kind of replenish and uh, aid those and continue those relationships in a positive way, like you explained. It's fantastic. Nishati, I'm going to continue with you because I have a question on mental health. And I know you're an expert in this field. What is the most common misconception people have about the men, about someone's mental health struggle? Um, I think um, I think the most common misconception that I see time and time again, not only in my practice but in our culture, in Indian culture. Um, is the stigma. Um, I think that the, the idea that having a mental illness means that you are weak or that you there's something wrong with you that people need to stay away from, um, it might be catching, or you know, all kinds of various belief systems that people have about mental health. Um, the, those are probably the, the most common and the most difficult to to put, sort of manage and work through. Um, I often hear patients telling me, I you know this is not me. This is, this is, uh, I can't believe this is happening to me. I was always the strong one. I was always the one who could cope. Um, uh, you know, I, I think those are probably, that's probably the, the most common misconception that I come across in terms of mental health. Um, I, I didn't know someone could catch a, or be worried about catching something while well, mental, mental health. I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah, absolutely. People have kinds of concerns and worries about associating with, some, with someone who has mental health uh, you know, difficulties um, and lots of fear. I think a lot of it is, is, is fear, actually. Wow. Wow. I'm going to stick with you, Nishaji. I'll come back to Ramji in a second so he doesn't feel too left out. Um, does struggle only happen when one has lost sense of belonging? or seeking safety. I'm basing that on your chart again. Yeah. So I see safety there, I see belonging there. So does struggling happen when they've lost their sense of belonging? So if they have no belonging? Well, I, it might not be a loss. It might be something that hasn't developed. And if you apply this to, for example, a child who's growing up, you, it's much easier to see how each of those aspects needs to be met. And it's about developing those relationships and, and uh, feel if you have a sense of belonging. It, it might not be something that's lost that you once had and then you've lost. It may be that 
it, it hasn't developed, you haven't had that opportunity. You may not be in the right environment. You may not be around the right sort of people or culture or uh, uh, you know, setting to allow those things to develop uh, around you. Okay. Ramji, I'll bring you back in. Are you still there? Yeah, yeah. Good, I was worried you left. <laughs> I'm listening very carefully. <laughs> Ramji, how does it help the individual suffer less or not suffer at all if they help others? So how does helping others make the individual suffer less? If you believe in the vibe concept, we need to, to reduce the negative vibes. We need to create the positive vibes. To reduce the, the mud in the water, we need to pour the pure water in, the, in that bucket. So more and more the positivity will come in your life. And the positivity will come when you start mingling with each other and helping each other. When you bring the smile on the other's faces, you become fresh. And that's why helping others will definitely reduce your struggle. Is uh, one saying that when you see that you are the luckier than the other person, you feel very great. And therefore, when you help someone else, you feel that one, I'm more lucky because I'm going to give something to them. When somebody giving anything, the donation or done, his hand is always upper. And therefore that concept of I'm some, I have something, that concept come, that feeling comes in their mind and that person becomes very relaxed. And therefore it is very useful for a, any person to always helping each other, then his struggle will come down. Ramji, I'm going to pick on you again because I like this answer, especially the vibes. So one vibe I get a few right now, is that you're smiling and your positivity is helping me smile and me be more positive. For many of you who don't already know Ramji, he does a lot of work for society. So he's made his base of that cup very wide. Ramji, do you struggle? I struggle to give speech. <laughs> German thing is one of the big, big struggle for me. Okay, this joke apart. <laughs> uh, the struggling means I do struggle, but I do struggle for my holding, like a cup wanted to become a firm. And therefore that firmness in the society is very important. I decided to have a big base with me, around in, uh, under me, but the people might feel that, no, you should have a small base. And therefore keeping in the small base as a firmness, I, I do struggle, but the struggling, is a very good fortune. It's a very good thing because every person should struggle because of, but because of the struggling only, we can improve ourselves. The seed struggles, then only then it, the seed can become a tree. If seed doesn't struggle, the seed can burn itself. And therefore struggle is for the improvement, for the development is always a good thing. I like that. So struggle doesn't necessarily have to be bad. I like that. Nishaji, are you there, Nishaji? Yes, I'm here, yes. Fantastic. What is, in your, from your ideas of mental health, and especially when you see mental health people struggle in, 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 your, in your inpatient wards? What is the number one way, or if there is a number one way, that a person can make a difference to those who are struggling? I think when somebody is struggling with their mental health, the things that often make the biggest difference are listening. Um, I think to, to be able to provide a genuinely listening, uh, ear to somebody is infinitely helpful but I think what's also very important is to do it with compassion and kindness uh, I think if that is imbued into your approach with some mental health difficulties um, that gives you a and in psychiatry we talk about therapeutic rapport with people 
So it's developing a relationship with somebody uh, that enables you to communicate uh, in an effective way. That's obviously not just talking, it's listening and doing it with compassion and care. Those things, uh, actually, this isn't something you really learn in a book. This is just being human, I think. No, I, I like that. That's, that's a clear indication to anyone that's watching um, what one can do. It, it's a big thing, in fact, and who knows better than yourself. Uh, Absolutely. I think yeah. when, when people actually feel um, safe, they're in a safe place and they feel able to talk to you, like we talked before a little bit about stigma and the fear of being you know, discovered or revealing yourself to be having the kind of difficult thoughts and feelings that you may be having the fears the insecurities being able to voice those with somebody with, who has an understanding of where that might be coming from i think that is the skill in 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 uh, psychiatry and psychology that we try and uh, help that's the best way to help i think patients uh, when they're going through these kind of difficulties no, I, I like that. I really like that. I'm going to pick on you again from a mental health aspect, also from a motherly aspect. How can parents help their children grow from struggle? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, I think, as Ramji said, I think struggle is inherently very important for us to grow as human beings. Uh, that extends obviously into our communities and into our cultures um, and to teach a child or to help a child learn that even if you don't succeed i mean i, I often my kids will hate me for saying this i'll say things like um, if you don't succeed try try again i mean the idea that failure means you must stop is i think a very key message to put across to children it's so important to allow them to fail and allow them to stand up again and that resilience that comes from that, that inner resilience the confidence the self-belief that comes from failing um, is invaluable absolutely um, uh, really? so, yeah I, th I think as, as a parent it's really useful and helpful the lesson of failure and I've been through it with with both of my children in various ways um, but hopefully that the, the idea that you can move on from failing, that you can achieve, um, is something that is slowly beginning to take hold within them. But it's very hard. I mean, even as adults, we all struggle when we don't achieve something straight away. It's really hard to keep, keep at it. Uh, and that's why you need that inner resilience and confidence um, to uh, help you through those difficult times. I think that's a brilliant answer there. And I, I, I think you've pushed on a point maybe even without knowing or but for many of us seeing failure is oh, it's like wow this is a, a, a path i just can't walk down and to have the ability to say actually no it's okay to fail just understand i'm going to help you through this to stand up again overcome that step again it, it, i really like what you said there i think it's brilliant I think it's brilliant. Um, oh, I think you're on mute. I think you're on mute. Uh, uh, am I on now? You're not on now. You're on uh, now. So I was recently diagnosed. I was tested positive for COVID. I was in isolation at home. And um, I would set a daily challenge for my children. And the immediate response every time was, uh, I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, but they did it and they then started to set challenges for me to to struggle through um, and my immediate thought was I can't do it I can't do it uh, so so it was a two-way process and it was great to be able to help each other get, move through that struggle to be able to achieve something you know reasonably small but it, um, it was it felt like a great achievement That's brilliant good stuff Ramji, I'm going to come back to you now. So I have a question for you. Is struggle not the essence of life and the spiritual path, as described, for instance, in the Gita? 
What's the question? So is is struggle just not the essence of life and the spiritual path? It's not? Not essence. It's inevitable. It's inevitable. Life is a happiness. The happiness of everything is the essence of life. And to get that happiness, the bliss, then we have to walk the path. And when we start walking on the path, then there might be so many obstacles. And the, our reaction towards that is called struggle. And therefore the struggle is basically our reaction to this obstacle towards to go to this path. And therefore, essence of life is not a struggle. Essence of life is a happiness. Wow. I'm going to ask you both a question. And we'll, it's a two-part question. Ramji, I'll start with you just because I have you on the screen right now. Nisha, do you have a think of the answer? Um, are we struggling as a society? Yes or no? And it's a two-part question. So yes or no? Are we struggling as a society? Yes. Yes. The second part is, and I think you've already answered this roughly yourself, how do we get rid of some of this struggle? Just think of the wider thing. In my first moment, I mean, I mentioned that when you think of the family, your struggle becomes easy. When the family will think of the society, that family becomes stable. When society will think of the, the country or the nation, that society becomes a long lasting when this nation will work for the civilization and that's where the civilization that the country will come for the society and, and the entire universe and that's why the more and more you start thinking about the wider range you become a stable and therefore this notion if you start imbibing in the children we do we do it and that's why in our culture we always say that the trees are sleeping we say Chanda mama Everybody is connected to us or related to us. And that's why the entire world, we are sharing our this planet with the entire nature. If these concepts we start expanding from the childhood, I think we'll have a less and less struggle and the people become in harmonious. I really like that. I really like that. In fact, Nishaji has a triangle. You have a similar triangle in your mind. It's just not as your background, yourself, your family, your outer being civilization so forth it will be different diagram it's called circle circles circle i see <laughs> we'll have to draw that up for next time i'm going to switch back to nichaji sure. um yeah i think was it the same question same question yeah. yeah i mean I, I actually think that why do we want to get rid of struggle what is what's the benefit of getting rid of struggle isn't as we've just spent the last 20 minutes or so talking about, life is about struggle. Maybe it's more about changing what we are struggling for, or maybe what we're struggling to get to. I think if, if we can try and clarify those things for individuals, for families, for society, then we can make a move forward. But, I, you know, it just, it's really made me wonder whether we, why would we want to get rid of struggle? Struggle is the way we achieve. Struggle is the way we move forward. Struggle is the way we find answers. Um, so you've got to struggle. There's no alternative. It's about what you're struggling for. I think that's maybe the question we need to ask ourselves as a society. What is it that we want to achieve actually? Where do we want to go? And how are we going to do it? Nishaji, the more you speak, the more I'm in awe. I really love your answers. Same with Ramji. Ramji, I kind of expected. Nishaji, I'm listening for the first time. But I mean, sat in amazement. You give some fantastic answers. Guys, thank you very much. Um, I think we're running out of time over here. Uh, we're going to have to come to our final finishing minutes. Uh, Ramji, Nishaji, your comments have been fantastic. Uh, there's been a few polls that have been out. What we're going to do, we're not going to give the answers to the polls just yet, but in the next coming week, we'll give them out on social media. So there's been a few questions asked. If you build out the answers to this poll, you'll see the answers on our social media posts in the next week or so.
Before I wrap this up, I'm going to ask Nishati and Ramji for a few final comments if they want. If they're okay, that's no problem. Nishati, I'll ask you first. Um, I, I think I would really like to just bring back to a bit of the mental health aspect, I guess. Um, I would encourage people to talk about within their families, with their friend groups, with their circles, with their communities, about how they're feeling at the moment. Try and open up those discussions that maybe it's been too difficult to have in uh, other times. Now is a real opportunity, I think, to really... Um, be able to have those difficult conversations that maybe we've been avoiding for, t for some time. Um, so I think that would be my, my sort of parting message is use the time that we have now and try and uh, make it a positive change in your life to re have a think about what you're struggling for. Is it the same or is it going to be different? I'm going to do a lot of listening now after what you've been saying today. Ramji, I'll pass it over to you. Any final comments? There are two words in English, ordinary and extraordinary. What's the difference between two words? If you add some struggle in ordinary life, you become extraordinary. And therefore we should add that little extra, little extra in your life with the struggle. Our entire life can become extraordinary. And therefore we should read the biographies of the people in the world who struggled, who strived, and created the miracles in the universe. That's it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you very much, Ramji and Nishaji. We'll start wrapping up now. Thank you all for watching tonight's Vicharamantan. I hope it's all given you some food for thought. Remember, Vicharamantan is not about providing solutions. It's about exploring ideas. I encourage all of you to take at least one thought-provoking idea with you home tonight. Carry on these mantans, these discussions in your own lives. Don't forget, you can find us on our website, join our mailing list, have a scroll through our past events, and enjoy some of our previous videos. Feel free to add us on Facebook, Instagram, and no doubt you'll see the answer to the polls on these this week coming. And also by social, you'll be kept up to date with our future events too. Thank you very much to our expert witnesses, Dr. Nisha Mukachi and Dr. Ram Bedi for joining us today. And finally, thank you all for taking some time out and being with us this evening. Your attendance ensures that we're able to continue our work. Before we go, I'd like you to know that we're having our next Vidal Mandan on Saturday the 2nd of May. That's two weeks from now. The topic will be the impact of pandemics on society. Good night, everyone, and I hope you'll join us in two weeks' time for our next challenge. Namaste.